Welcome to Living Hope Podcasts with Dr. Peter McLuhan teaching on Miracles in the Book of Acts. Join us in our worship center to hear the Holy Spirit is for everyone. In last week's program, we learned how one of the great persecutors of the early church became a follower of Jesus. It all happened on the road to Damascus, where Saul had an encounter with Jesus. Saul's life was radically changed. He became one of the most well-known witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus in the first century. In today's program, we'll learn about a Roman centurion who also had a vision of Jesus that radically changed his life. Cornelius was stationed at the coastal town of Caesarea where the Roman procurator of Judea lived. Dr. Luke describes Cornelius as a devout man who feared God, who was generous to the poor and prayed daily, Acts chapter 10, verse 2. Those are not the qualities one normally thinks of when you think of a Roman soldier. He was an unusual man. One day Cornelius had an encounter very similar to Saul's on the road to Damascus. Luke says, Cornelius saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, if God ever calls you by name, you will know who's talking to you. One morning at 3.30 a.m., Jesus called me by name and gave me a short message. Cornelius never forgot his encounter with Jesus. Cornelius stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? Jesus said to him, Your prayers and arms have ascended as a memorial before God. Acts chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Then Cornelius was instructed to send soldiers to Joppa to find a man by the name of Simon Peter. They were to invite Peter to come with them to Cornelius's home to share a message with him. Like Saul, Cornelius was given very specific instructions, which he wisely obeyed. We also learn from the story that before God sends us to share his message, he prepares the heart of the person who he wants us to give that message to. Now Luke shifts the focus from this fascinating story to where the apostle Peter is actually staying. Peter is ministering in a region known as the Plain of Sharon. He is releasing powerful miracles and sharing the good news about Jesus. In Lydda, he healed a man by the name of Aeneas, who had been paralyzed for eight years. Luke tells us, all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw Aeneas, and they turned to the Lord, Acts chapter 9, verse 35. Seeing the power of Jesus released in the life of this man who'd been paralyzed caused many people in that region to become followers of Jesus. Healing stories like this travel really fast. In a town called Joppa, a well-known lady by the name of Dorcas became ill and died. Followers of Jesus there were sent to bring Peter from Lydda to Joppa to pray for her. He did. And stunningly, she was raised back to life. Luke says this about the raising of Dorcas. It became known throughout all of Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. This has always been the way Jesus reaches people. Jesus released the power of God before he preached the message that God gave him to share. Someone listening has just lost a loved one. Speak life over your loved one. Call their spirit back to their body. Call your loved one by name. Say to them, come alive, come back in the name of Jesus. Mama Rachel in Kenya walked into a dispensary to visit a friend who worked there. She discovered that a young boy had just died. She commanded him to come back to life in the name of Jesus, and he did. Jesus is still raising the dead. He's looking for people through whom people who died before their time can be raised back to life. After these powerful experiences, Peter was resting on the roof of the home where he was staying in Joppa. And while he was waiting for dinner, 
he falls into a trance and he sees a blanket coming down from heaven filled with animals that are not kosher for Jewish people to eat. Peter hears a voice say, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Acts chapter 10 and verse 13. Naturally, Peter protests, saying, No, no, I, I won't do that. Then the voice said, What God has made clean, do not call common. Acts chapter 10 and verse 15. All this happened three times. It's clear that Peter is being prepared for a great shift in how God relates to Gentiles. Eventually, the meaning of this tremendous vision will become clear to Peter. He says in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, the words of the prophet Isaiah were finally about to be fulfilled. The prophet said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 7. Not just a house for the Jewish people, but a house for all people. Peter realized that the vision gave him permission not only to meet with Cornelius, but to even enter into his home and even take a meal with him. That is good news. Peter agreed to go with the soldiers to meet the centurion. He tells us that he understands that God is about to do something new. God used Peter to say to the world that Jesus is for everyone. God is always looking for people who are open to new ideas and new ways of sharing the message of Jesus with others. The journey from Joppa to Caesarea is about 40 miles. When he arrives, he finds that Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. Acts chapter 10, verse 24. Peter begins his message by saying, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to God. Acts chapter 10 verse 34 and 35. Peter continues on in his message by saying, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Acts chapter 10, verse 37 and 38. Peter went on to say the apostles were the first witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. After Jesus was put to death, God raised him up on the third day, and God appointed Jesus to judge the living and the dead, and that everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins. What a powerful message. But before Peter finished preaching, something amazing happened. Luke says, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. The Jewish followers of Jesus who had come with Peter were absolutely amazed because the gift of Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. They were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling and praising God. Acts chapter 10, verse 45 and 46. After Peter heard the Gentiles speaking in tongues, he said, Can anyone withhold water of baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 47 and 48. These stunning developments did not go down very well with the religious leaders in Jerusalem. When Peter returned to Jerusalem, the leaders criticized him harshly for all these things. But after they calmed down, Peter related the whole story about the vision he had and the blanket that God gave him that came down from heaven and that Cornelius himself had had a vision of Jesus in a shining robe. Peter said, 
If then God gave the same gift to them that he gave to us who believed in the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could stand in God's way? Acts chapter 11, verse 17. You'll remember from our first program on miracles in the book of Acts, wind, fire, and tongues, that there were two types of tongues that the first followers of Jesus experienced. First, they all spoke in tongues in the upper room where no believers were present. All the apostles praised God in tongues. Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke in tongues. The brothers of Jesus spoke in tongues. And the other disciples who were present spoke to God in tongues. And then after that, after they left the upper room and entered into the steps of the temple where Peter preached his first spirit-filled message, we hear that it is at that point that the miracles of tongues was not so much in the speaking as it was in the hearing. Everyone heard of the mighty works of God in his or her own language. When Peter said that the Gentiles received what we received, he meant that the Gentiles received a private prayer language to praise God, and they were also able to speak in other known languages and to be clearly understood. Peter said, Then I remembered the word of the Lord and how he said, John baptized with water, but I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 11 and verse 16. On this day, God made it clear that he makes no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. Jesus is not just for Jews, as so many of my friends around the world try to tell me. Jesus is for everyone. Luke says, when they heard these things, the religious leaders, that is, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Acts chapter 11 and verse 18. If you've ever wondered if Jesus is for you, this story tells you. From this very moment forward, people from every race and every background have turned to Jesus for salvation. The door was officially opened to fulfill the last words of Jesus, who said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. The message of Jesus has been preached on every continent and every nation. The remaining places for the gospel to reach or isolated pockets of people speaking a rare language or in a unique dialect. Today's program shows how God uses miracles of healing and visions to help people accept his plan of salvation through Jesus. If you're sick, and especially if you are paralyzed, I speak healing to your body right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, say with me, come Holy Spirit, fill me with the Spirit of God, giving me a heavenly language to talk to you. If you're not sure that Jesus is still alive, ask God to give you the same kind of vision that he gave to Saul and to Cornelius. Write to me and let me know what God has done for you. In today's program, we've learned that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are for everyone. If you receive Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and we'll send you more information to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. To hear all of this sermon or more uplifting messages, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join us next week for another episode of Living Hope Podcasts.